Ladies, you can decenter men and still be insecure about your role in patriarchy. Hi, I'm Yudi. I'm with the Bourbon Bougie team here to talk about women in pop culture, film, and TV. This little series I like to call Beware of the Hobosexual. It's featuring Miranda and Steve from X in the City. I'm going to be using this series to do other characters from different TV shows, but we're starting off with Miranda and Steve. There's already a part one and two. Go check those out and then come back and join us. So back to decentering men. Last time I was kind of talking and I misspoke and I said that Miranda has always decentered men, which is not true, but I think that she was decentering men and was in the process of it. I think a lot of the times when we think of decentering men, we think of this like full stop, no talking about men, no doing anything for men. And that is not always what it's about. Sometimes it's like not making them your first and second priority, maybe even not your third priority. It's still okay to want romantic love and romantic connections with men. That's fine, but not giving them your everything, your all. You know, being a separate individual first and then getting into a relationship. So like I was saying in the intro, you can decenter men and still be insecure about your role in patriarchy. And this is because we are indoctrinated since like childhood to cater to men and for our lives to be based around men and that you can't do anything if you don't have a man in your life and like we're constantly shamed about this and that is like a very specific theme in Smegs in the City because all the women kind of struggle with like what their life means without men. Decentering men can kind of be like a weight loss journey. Sometimes your weight goes back up, it goes back down, it fluctuates a little bit, you know, because like our, we're humans, our bodies aren't always just like constantly losing weight. And even if you're doing your best, you're eating well, you know, we have stress, we have other factors. And that's the same thing with decentering men. Like we are constantly told by the media, by our parents, by just people we interact with every single day that we need to center men. And so when we don't do that, when we go against the grain and go against the norm, it's it's not always going to be a linear process. Ooh, sorry, that was a long intro. Okay, somebody asked me on YouTube if I hated Steve more than I hate Big. And I thought that was a brilliant question because yes, I do hate Steve more than I hate Big. And I will explain why. To talk about Steve versus Big, we have to get into the discussion of the nice guy. And Steve is like the definition of a nice guy, but take it up 10 notches. So I was trying to kind of look up the definition and I went on like the dictionary and all that stuff and they did not have it. You know why? Because we haven't really like coined these terms or not set in stone, but we need to. Like over the years, we're going to get the nice guy in there. We're going to get King Baby. We're going to get homosexual. We're going to get all of it in the dictionary, I hope. Because I couldn't find it anywhere else. I had to go to Urban Dictionary. And I know you're like, Urban Dictionary? I know. I know. Calm down. Everyone settle. Settle. The Urban Dictionary definition of it was the nice guy refers to people who believe basic social expectations are currency for SEX. And that is the definition of Steve. That's also kind of how Spinner is. Um, but I think that he is more of like a nice guy plus like a pick me boy. And I might get into that a little bit later. It's like a much more like in detail and in depth discussion. Nice guys like Steve are terrifyingly calculated. The scariest people you will ever meet are people that use their intelligence to feign ignorance. Steve does this a lot to Miranda. He manipulates her and pretends like he doesn't know what he's doing or that he doesn't know how to wash dishes or take care of the dog to get a leverage over her, to get an advantage over her. And then, you know, it's a, like a weaponized incompetence type situation. The difference between Steve and Big. Big is much more open with his manipulation and red flags, while Steve hides under the guise of the nice guy. His deception is sly and many times can go undetected. And that is a common theme when people watch the show. A lot of people love Steve at first and they're like, oh my God, Miranda, why won't you give this guy a chance? And he's manipulating her the whole time and he's also manipulating the audience. The nice guy will not only manipulate you, but will manipulate others around you when you don't do what they want. At least with Big, what you see is what you get. But with Steve... He pretends to have your best interest in mind while actively manipulating you. Men like this will ruin your life and make everyone in your life think it's your fault. We left off after Miranda and Steve break up um, for the argument with the suit. So Miranda goes to her gynecologist and her gynecologist tells her that she has a lazy ovary. 
So because of this, she lowers her standards and she goes on a date with this guy that she doesn't really like from her firm. And he tells her like this really rude thing about how she shouldn't freeze her egg and that like certain people shouldn't procreate. And after that, she kind of like snaps back into it and she like doesn't um, lower her standards anymore because she's like, I am 33 and I still have one working ovary. Why should I let a man tell me what to do? The other reason why she goes on the date with this guy is because she feels like she needs to like fast track life. She's like, I'm where I want in my career, but I, I don't have a relationship. I don't have a baby. I have a home, but I don't have anyone to share with. So she feels like she is missing milestones in her life. And so now she's lowering her standards, which is like a thing that you absolutely should not do. Like your standards are there for a reason. I think of standards as also like boundaries, like things that make you you and things that you want to tolerate or you don't want to tolerate in a relationship so let's skip forward to the last episode of season two miranda and carrie are shopping for some flowers and miranda looks up and who does she see hobo steve right so she obviously she grabs carrie because she's like distressed and she carrie drops her flower they run the opposite way is it the most mature move no but if i see a walking pest that wants to nest i'm running the opposite way too so the girls have their weekly lunch and Carrie's like, oh, I'm so sad for Steve. Like he looks so sad. And then Charlotte, Charlotte times in and she's like, poor Steve. Not sure why Charlotte is always such like a Steve shooter or like maybe she just like doesn't respect Miranda. And this is nothing against service workers. I completely respect service workers. But in the show, the way they talk about them, they don't respect them very much. And the way they talk to them, it's very clear they don't respect them. And Charlotte, when um, Miranda and Steve start to date and they start to get together, Charlotte literally says that she would never date a working class man. And she makes some like pretty nasty remarks about Steve. So for her to be like, poor Steve, I'm sad about Steve. Like, girl, shut up. You don't care about that man. Be real. So the women get into this conversation. They're like, should you be friends with your ex? Can you be friends with her ex? Have you been friends with your ex? And I'm going to go on my little rant again. You do not have to be friends with your ex. You don't have to be friends with anyone you don't want to. Women need to stop apologizing for men for not wanting to engage with them. Even if Miranda and Steve ended up on good terms, which they didn't, she does not owe him anything. She does not have to be friends with him. Like That is such like a weird concept where we're like, oh, it's an immaturity thing. No, it's actually a mature thing to be like, I can be civil with you, but I don't need to have a relationship with you. Like There's a certain level of maturity you have to get through to even get to that level, and some people don't see that. Miranda does not owe Steve shit. He deserves nothing. You are entitled to nothing. And I know that's hard for us ladies sometimes because we say this kind of things and we get, we get unalived. Like we get our lives taken from us. But at a certain point, we need to start setting boundaries. But this is a big part of decentering men is to not cater to their every move. You do not have to speak to him if you do not want to. You are not forced to. You are not obligated to. Okay. Okay, the girls are still at lunch and Carrie makes this like very stupid comment and I don't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for saying stupid because I know we're supposed to be like give other women grace, but she makes a very dumb comment about how it's childish not to be friends with your ex. Miss Bradshaw, you need to sit this one out. You let a man dog you out for 15 years and you're talking about it's, this is childish. You know what's childish? Actually, I won't get into it. We will wait for that in the Don't Be a Carrie Bradshaw series. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This was part three of Beware of the Hobosexual. Like, follow, and share for more. I'm going to be putting out um, part four pretty quickly. Hello, Burbies. This is part four of a series I like to call Beware of the Hobosexual, featuring Miranda and Steve from X in the City. So we left off with the girls at lunch talking about how it's childish not to be friends with an ex. And then this is like the next day because they're in different clothing in the scene, as you can see on the screen. This MFR shows up to Miranda's house and berates her for running away from him on the streets to the point where she's in tears. As you can see, like in the scene, she's crying because he's basically saying like, you're such a bad person for running away from me on the street. It's me. I'm Steve. I'm not any other boyfriend. I'm Steve. How could you run away from me? Making her feel so incredibly bad. Miranda's better than me though because why are you at my apartment? Who gave you the permission to be here? Like you broke up with me, remember? How dare you come to my apartment and then make me cry for not speaking to you? I 
I do not owe you anything. I don't have to speak to you. I don't like you. That last part was me, not Miranda, because obviously in the scene, she's like, I miss you, and I want to tell you when something happy happens because, you know, we've been brainwashed into thinking that Steve is a good guy. This is what she should have said to the dispatch. Hello, NYPD. Hobo Steve is at my door. Please take him to the nearest Mojo Dojo Casa house. So I believe that Miranda running away from Hannah on the street was her way of setting a boundary. But the problem with Steve is that anytime Miranda sets a boundary and he realizes that that boundary does not serve him personally, he guilts her into changing her mind or to kind of releasing her grip on that boundary and pushing back a little bit. So after Mr. Hobo Steve coerces Miranda into dinner, they fall into old habits and hook up. So later, Miranda is preparing for her LASIK eye surgery, and Steve is slowly trying to sneak her way, his way into her life, or excuse me, back into her life. So he asks her if he can help her recover, because he just wants to be friends. He wants nothing more. He just wants to be a good friend, guys. And Miranda, of course, denies him and tells him that Carrie will be helping her recover from LASIK. So as we know, Carrie is supposed to pick up and take care of Miranda after her surgery. Instead of Carrie doing that, she sends Steve. Girl, I cannot tell you when I first watched the scene, I like, not hives, but goosebumps. Just like I was in shock. Maybe I'm just hypervigilant and have trauma, but Carrie, you put your friend in such a bad and dangerous situation. You were supposed to be her guardian because she's on high medication. She can't see. She's just had surgery. You promised that you would help her. Instead, you send a man that Miranda specifically says that she does not want there to come and help her while she is incapable of consenting. I wouldn't even do this to another woman, but to do this to my friend, Carrie, and it just it just reinforces what I was saying when I first started this series about how having male-centered friends will disrupt your life because Carrie is so male-centered. She's not thinking of Miranda's safety in this time. She's thinking of, let's get Miranda and Steve back together. They're so good together. Let's get them back together. I'm pretty sure like she knows why her, him and Miranda broke up, but still, maybe there's some things that she left out. Maybe she doesn't trust him. Maybe she doesn't want him in her life. Why do you keep forcing it? Then we get this like insulting voice over from Carrie saying, and for the first time in her life, she saw things clearly. She saw what? A homosexual in her bed? That's her seeing clearly? Like it's supposed to be like a double entendre because obviously she has her LASIK surgery, but then also like it's Carrie saying like, she saw that Steve is right in front of her and that they should be together. Steve and Miranda start casually dating again. And then Steve tells Miranda that he wants to see her exclusively. And Miranda's like, mm, we're just supposed to be friends that hook up every now and then. Like, no. Not long after, they actually start dating exclusively. And one day, Miranda comes home from work and she sees Steve in her apartment because I guess he still has her key from the last time that they were dating. He's in her apartment. He's watching TV. He's ordered takeout. He's like slowly starting to take over her space. And the next day, like clockwork, he does it again. He shows up to her house and is watching TV. And then Miranda goes to lunch with the girls and she makes a comment about how she only has three hours of time to watch TV before Steve gets there, like before he comes to her apartment unannounced, not like she's inviting him over. And I'm just thinking like, even though this is your boyfriend, kick him out. This is not his house. He's not paying rent here. Tell him to leave. Over time, Miranda is getting more and more irritated with steve because at this point he's invading her space he's always at her place she's okay with being in a relationship but as long as that relationship comes with separate things and also i just think at this point in time he's moving too fast for her he's trying to slowly move in he's coming into her space like he's not even paying rent he's just putting his stuff everywhere while she sleeps steve starts inching over to her side of the bed and it, that's just like another thing that builds up for her also, he's leaving a pile of clothes on her bedroom floor. Miranda doesn't know yet why he's doing this, but we all know why he's doing this. This man is a hobo. We've seen his apartment, and I'm not trying to shame him for the kind of apartment he can afford. Because we can see that he can afford an apartment, even if it's not the nicest or what he perceives to be the nicest. 
he still has a place to live. If he has a place to live, why is he always over at his girlfriend's house? Like, I don't understand that. You're not paying rent here. You're not contributing to anything. He doesn't like Steve doesn't do housework. He doesn't do dishes. He doesn't mop the floor. He doesn't do his own laundry. So what he's doing is actually just burdening her because now she's like, oh, I can only watch my TV three hours a day. Girl, you're paying for it. Tell that man to leave. Miranda becomes more irritated. So she talks to him about it. She's like, you're leaving your stuff everywhere. You're coming on my side of the bed. Like, I can't do this anymore. We need to like figure out a way where we can both work together. And Steve tells her to go to bed. And then obviously she's trying to have a conversation with him. So she gets more frustrated Then he gets up out of bed and he like threatens to leave. Um, he threatens to grab all his stuff, leave and leave his key. Because of Steve's threats, Miranda panics and starts to backpedal a little bit. So Steve doesn't take his keys or leaves any of his stuff. He just leaves. But before he leaves, he says this really chilling thing to her. He's like, Jesus, Miranda, sometimes it's like you're the guy. Even if Steve doesn't realize it yet, this is a detrimental thing to say to Miranda because we as the audience know how fragile her relationship with her femininity is. And I think after this point, it's a turning point for Steve and he starts to realize what this means for Miranda. And I think he uses this. I don't even think I know he uses this to manipulate Miranda. He uses her masculine side and her tomboy side and her, you know, her being in her masculine energy, which is not a bad thing. I say this all the time. It is not a bad thing, but he weaponizes this against her. Even though Miranda's frustrated, she expressed what she needed. And instead of Steve being like an emotionally intelligent and emotionally healthy partner, which, you know, sometimes people aren't there. Like, I'm not trying to judge anybody that is not there. Sometimes it's harder for us to get there. Like, Burb says all the time where people's baseline is. And even sometimes, like, you can know your flaws, but it's, but it's hard to do the work to unpack that. As I was saying, Steve's response to Miranda's request is incredibly inappropriate. If your partner comes to you and says, hey, I need you to do this, or I really would appreciate if you wouldn't leave your stuff all over the floor, don't get up and storm out. And then afterwards, you like make her feel bad for the person that she is. Like, she's a tomboy, that's fine. But why are you like bringing that up into an argument? Like it's a character flaw or something. And I know you guys are getting so annoyed with me for saying this. I'm so, so sorry for saying this over and over again, but I have to say it. I have to drive in my point. This is why I don't like Steve. He manipulates Miranda all the time. He always erodes her boundaries. Like right now she says, hey, you know what? We, can we pull back a little bit? I don't like that you're always in my space. And instead of doing that, he throws a tantrum and makes her feel bad. Then afterwards she goes to this like, God is sanctuary class so she can be connected with her femininity. And it's like, that is so like, you're so mean and you're, you're a horrible person. You're not a good partner. This was part five of a series I like to call beware of the hobosexual. Keep in tune for my other series and like share and subscribe.